Good morning and welcome to the Hibs Observer Monday debrief. Uh, I'm Liam Bryce and I'm joined today by a very special guest. Um, we have Craig Nisbet on the debrief today, who Hibs fans you may better know as 9125 Analysis on Twitter. Um, if you don't follow Craig, then I strongly, strongly suggest that you do something about that. Um some of the sharpest Hibs tactical insight that you'll come across. Uh, Craig's also a contributor to our website as well. And he joins me today to go through Saturday's 3-1 uh, defeat to Rangers at Ibrox. Uh, we'll get to the game in a moment, Craig. But just uh, first of all, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, and how are you? How are you today? I'm good, thanks, mate. And uh, yeah, as I said, delighted to, to get the opportunity to come on and uh, talk about Saturday's game. So thanks for having me on. No, it's brilliant to have you, mate. Brilliant to have you. And as I said, we do really appreciate you coming on. Uh, just before we get started, folks, though, I need to uh, pause for a wee word for our sponsors uh, and to talk about something that's key to keeping our homes warm and cosy. We are thrilled to have Weissman, a global leader in the boiler industry, known for their top-notch German engineering sponsor, our podcast. Uh, they've teamed up with Scotland's very own award-winning installation team, MPH Boilers, making this a perfect match right here in Scotland. Weissman's boilers are engineered to deliver not just warmth, but unparalleled efficiency and reliability. We're talking about cutting-edge technology that's designed to save you on your energy bills and also reduce emissions. And with MPH Boilers, you know you're getting service from the very best in the business. A local team that's committed to excellence and customer satisfaction. As part of this incredible partnership, when you choose a Weissman boiler installed by MPH Boilers, you also get a free internet controller, making it a breeze to manage your heating anytime, anywhere. Plus, they're offering the first year service free because it's all about giving you peace of mind and making sure you're looked after. So if your boiler is showing its age or you're considering an upgrade, this is your chance to get world-class engineering with local expert service. Weissman and MPH Boilers, it's a match made in Scotland. So make sure to check them out and take the first step towards a warmer, more efficient home. Uh, Craig, so let's crack on without any further ado. 3-1 defeat for Hibs uh, at uh, Ibrooks on Saturday. Uh, Mizzy and Malida getting the goal for Nick Montgomery's side. Uh, getting back into the game after going behind to a James Tavernier uh, strike, uh, but then obviously they went level for very long. Hibs, unfortunately. Cyril Dessler's heading in Todd Cantwell's cross, and then with five minutes to go, it was Rabi Matondo who struck in the kind of the clinching goal kind of put it to bed for Rangers uh, unfortunately for a Hibs perspective so I mean Craig if we can just start um, just in general terms perhaps you know what did you what did you make of Hibs set up what did you make of the team selection and what Mc, Nick Montgomery <clears throat> went for on Saturday yeah I mean I, I wouldn't have disagreed with the lineup and, and the setup you know it's it, it's obviously the last few games it's it's looked good you know I know home to Livingston's very different than away to Rangers but certainly having Lafondra um up top and you know that, that allowing us to keep uh, Maizian left and, and Yuan on the right while Boyle was recovering I, I think we've looked we've looked really good there and Triantis and Newell have worked really well as a two um so no I was I was actually quite happy to see the same personnel start and like we know Nick Montgomery now, he doesn't really change. You know, he doesn't really change anything about how we're going to play and how we're going to and how we set up. So, no, it was no surprises. Um, there's a couple of wee, a couple of wee tactical tweaks he, he he put in place, I think, for the game to try and counter Rangers. Um, but no, overall, I was happy with the the shape and the setup. Yeah. Yeah, I. I mean, it, it wasn't. I think we, me and Patrick, discussed last week that we didn't expect too many changes um, and it was kind of a case of, you know, from the Livingston game, you know, if it's not broke, then don't fix it. Obviously, it's a very different proposition um, going to Ibrox um, than it is for, obviously, Livingston coming to Easter Road. Um, so, I mean, what did you, first half, how did, what did you make of how it, how it panned out? How did you, you know, I think, you know, Hibbs, as you say, you know, Nick Montgomery, he's not going to really deviate too much from what he wants to do. Hibs did try to build out from the back. Um, you know, they did try and play their own football. Um, but you know, it was kind of tough, tough ask. Um I, I mean uh, to be fair, I mean I think they did it well in patches. Um you know 
I thought Joe Newell, good in the middle of the park. It was kind of key to when Hibs did get out and when they did kind of break the Rangers press that you know, I think he was the kind of, you know, the man that was key to that quite a lot of the time. But yeah, just coming back to the, what did you make of the first half and how, how the game panned out? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, listen, your Rangers are like they're a good team and, and they're hard to play against. You know, they 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 set up in a, a similar shape to, to what Hibs play, but you know, the key difference is, you know, Lundstrom drops in beside the, the centre halves, either between them to the right or left of them. Diamandi pushes up into the middle. Their full backs obviously go super high and wide. And then that allows, you know, their front four players, you know, well, on Saturday obviously Cantwell, Silva. Dessers right, they rotate really well and they move into these different pockets of space in front of the back four and between the midfield. So it's, it's really hard to defend against. And I actually think what Montgomery did, the one tweak was you could see every time we were out of possession, um, you know, we dropped back and actually Triantis dropped in between uh, or again sometimes to the sides of Rocky and Fish. And, and I think that was to counter if Rangers get the ball wide and you know, Silva makes a run and go, you know, Cadden can go and press Barisic, Silva makes a run in behind him. It would allow Fish to go and press that in the channel, knowing that you've got a bit of cover behind you in Triana. So I think on on paper, and, and there was a couple of times it did work really well, but there was a few times that you could see there was a wee bit miscommunication and um, that obviously required Marcondes uh, to come back in and sit beside Newell because Triantis was dropping back. And a couple of times, I think he was a bit slow to do that. Um, and of course, you know, well, I'm sure we'll touch on Yuan and uh, Mizian in terms of their their attack and play, but defensively, it isn't their strength, and we know that. Um, so I think they certainly struggled in that first part to sort of keep up with the with the demands. Yeah, I think um, where the problems were seem well, certainly to me, uh, where the problems were coming for Hibs um, in the first half is kind of what you've touched on there. There's a lot of rotation in that Rangers front line. They've kind of got a lot of license to. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, just kind of fit, go and find their own solutions. I think more so now than they used to be. I mean, you used to, like, for example, I think even, you know, you've got Tavernier joining in as well. He used to be the kind of, you know, he would get high and wide Tavernier, but he's now kind of, I think Philip Clement's kind of changed his role to an extent where you often see him coming into kind of inside pockets, uh, coming in the pitch instead of staying wide. So, I mean, I, I do feel that, you know, the, the, the problems for Hibs in that first half certainly that came down the uh, the wide areas, would you agree? Yeah, yeah, and, and I think that's, and you know, you're right on touching on what Clement's done for Rangers, you know, under Michael Beale towards the end, they were very static and they were, I'm not saying they were easy to play against, but there wasn't much movement, so you could pinch the ball off them, maybe through a bit overplaying and then hit them on the counter, whereas now, yeah, <clears throat> Tavernier might pop inside and, and there's a, a lot more rotation. So, yeah, I think certainly down the wide areas, it was mostly down... I think our right hand side um that they, they sort of pushed for in the first half and you know we struggled a lot uh to kind of match the runs and sort of match the intensity which which is always going to be the case ibrox but you know when you mentioned at the, the top of the show there about playing out from the back it was quite hard sometimes to follow on uh on tv but you were obviously live at the game it seemed like we were still setting up to play, but it seemed like for, for the first time in a, in a wee while, there was a bit of disconnect between sort of what we were trying to do at the back and what was happening in the, the top end of the pitch. It seemed like we were struggling to, to get the ball out. And I actually think for the first goal, it looks like we set up, the ball <clears throat> gets kind of hit out to fish and he's kind of chasing that down the touchline and then just kind of thumps it long and then we lose possession and, and they go down that side. Did, was there a bit of disconnect, you feel, in how we were playing out? Yeah, a wee bit. I mean, I think at times it worked, um, and when it did work, it looked it looked pretty, you know, it looked pretty decent. It looked perhaps as maybe sort of comfortable Hibs as Hibs have looked, um, you know, trying to play that way against either you know the likes of Celtic or Rangers this season. But you know, I, I, I agree at times that um, if you're kind of beating that first line of press at times when it was getting a bit further forward. Um, when it's you know when it came time to make that kind of maybe more decisive you know maybe more penetrating forward pass that it didn't quite. I mean, obviously, I mean you can't disregard the goal, very 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 good goal that have scored. Um, but I think there were kind of opportunities to to create such a situation. Sorry, like that a bit more often. Um, and a couple of times it just maybe wasn't the right pass. It was maybe. You know, it was a couple of times I felt maybe Yuan held on to the ball a wee bit too long. 
Um, so, I mean, I think it was, I think to me, certainly the plan um, in terms of trying to get out that way and try to, obviously, you know, Rangers, as I touched on, Rangers fullbacks, you know, they like to push up, push up very high. Um, there seemed to be, you know, a kind of, a, a sort of focus on, you know, when that happens, if the ball turns over, how to get the ball, can they get down the space that's kind of maybe vacated by Tavernier and Barisic? Um, so, I mean, as a kind of, you know, a way of setting up and a way of trying to do it against Rangers, I felt it was, um, you know, I, I couldn't find too too much kind of fault with that. Um, it was just maybe in the execution at times. Uh, it didn't, it just wasn't consistently there. And I think more kind of, uh, more so as well as the second half wore on, um, I think it's changes were made. Uh, the game kind of, I think Nick Montgomery said it himself, actually, the, the game sort of drifted a wee bit. Um, it, you know, it, it kind of it lost. I, I felt like some of the intensity that it had in the first half. It was actually, you know, as much as it was, you know, three one defeat for Hibs. Being there, it was actually I thought a very kind of interesting, intriguing game to watch. Uh, the way that the kind of two sides tried to combat each other. Um, but obviously, I, I just I think I did agree with Nick Montgomery's assessment that Hibs were did play some good stuff, but ultimately not quite good enough. Um, if we come to, I thought we'll just take it in chrono chronological order instead of going to the, the first Rangers goal. The penalty, obviously, it's, it's Nectar Triantis. Uh, he's caught John Suter. Um, he's, he's, I think he's a bit unlucky, Triantis. He's, he's kind of eyes on the ball. Mm. He's backpedaling. The you know the cross is coming at the back post, and he's 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 kind of caught Suter um, without really knowing that Suter is there. To be honest, um, what did you make of that? Did you feel it was a do you feel it was a bit harsh? I, I, I see a kind of lot of you know split opinion on this. You know, some pundits kind of saying, you know, I don't feel you know if we're giving penalties for that, you know, what's happening. Uh, what did you make of it? I think when I first seen it, you know, it looks you know because of the flailing arm, it, it looks really clumsy. And I'd actually understand if the ref gave it in the moment and just pointed to the spot straight away. But you know, he was it, to me, it looked like he was looking right at it and sort of let the play go. Having watched it back a few times, um, Triantis jumps for it. He's miles away from the ball um, for a start. And Suter kind of arrives. He sort of gets a bump off of Bita and, and he barely gets a jump, really. So he's yeah. kind of coming up as Triantis is coming down. They're both nowhere near the ball. So I think it is, it's just an unfortunate collision. And it's the arm, I think, and the, the, the face that is probably what swings it. You know, I think if his arm comes down and he just sort of bumps into Suter, I don't think there'll be anything given. Um, but actually, interestingly, you know, in the, like the referee not given that in the second half, there was one where I don't know if you remember, there was like a diagonal switch, and I think it was Sterling coming in on Cadden, and Cadden's mm -hmm. kind of backtracking, kind of same thing. You know, Sterling leads yeah. with the arm, he doesn't mean it. Cadden goes down, and the ref sort of just like plays on for a little bit. And Rangers had the ball in and around the box, and then he eventually stops for the head knock. So, it's just, I think it's just the inconsistencies really that frustrate fans, and, and especially yeah. when it comes to the VAR. But yeah, I, I did think it was. I did think it was harsh on him having having watched it back a couple of times. Yeah, I think certainly when you, I saw there was a, a VR review happening, I was kind of you were kind of first thought was kind of like, oh, here we go again. Um, you kind of know what's coming um, as soon as the the referee goes over the screen. It tends well, to only I don't know if be... you mean, but Cantwell picked up the ball and took it straight to the spot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I, I know they must, they must have known. <laughs> Yeah, actually, um, big um, Rocky Bashiri. Um, he made a beeline for the penalty spot as well. I don't know if he was attempting some sort of maybe gardening maintenance on the penalty yeah. spot at that point. I, I couldn't possibly say. Um, so obviously, David Marshall saves the penalty. Scott Wright falls in with a rebound. It's Via intervenes again, and he's kind of in judge. He's a judge, sorry, um, to have encroached into the box. So at that point, you're kind of thinking, well, all right, Hibs got a reprieve here. Um, they kind of need to leverage this, or at least you know, make it, uh, turn it to their advantage. But you know, within a couple of minutes, um, the ball is in the back of the Hibs net. What do you feel? What do you feel went wrong for that first goal? Yeah, I mean, there was like we were looking at play out, and you could see that there was you know maybe a bit of commute. Newell was calling fish in, and fish was kind of pointing forward and. As the ball played out, I think Marshall kind of slightly overhits the pass to Fish that, you know, he, he's then under a wee bit of pressure. So he goes long and I think it goes towards uh, Lafondra and it's, mm -hmm. it's on the way into Yuan, sorry, and it's just overturned. By then we're kind of a wee bit 
out of shape and obviously Lundstrom picks up the ball and and uh, drives forward and it and obviously goes into Cantwell and then yeah you can just see it you can see it's just that 2v1 Cantwell kind of drifts in Cadden's left um, and there's a wee bit you know I feel like Fish sort of drops naturally back in to sort of to defend the, the six yard yep. box in there but obviously Triantis is there Rocky's there as well so it does leave a lot of space for Lindstrom with the cross I think Fish makes the first contact actually and sort of heads yeah, uh, the, the header sort of loops over to the back post doesn't it? and then you can see Mizian kind of running back in late and listen it's it's some strike you know there's no doubt about that and Fish is actually unlucky with the, the clearance off the line um, but it's just disappointing because it seems like it was it came from a turnover that we maybe, we, we maybe weren't quite set up when we were playing out at the time and yeah, mm -hmm. it's frustrating to, to especially so close after the the penalty reprieve as well. Yeah, I exactly. You know, you're kind of thinking right. At least dig in for a while. You know, obviously Rangers kind of backs it up um, from that happening. You know, just kind of classic. You know, I think keep it tight for five minutes. <laughs> moment. Yeah. Um, Hibs unfortunately couldn't. Um, but you know, got ourselves back into the game, and it was a really really good goal. I thought. Um, it kind of starts from the Hibs half. I think in the end, it's kind of it's all about Yuan and uh, Mizian. But I thought the the pass from Marcondes initially. Um, to, I think it's it goes into Mizian. He's just it's a weak one of those ones a wee bit of disguise on it. He's just kind of mm -hmm. he's um, poked it through, um, and then it's obviously it's gone out to Yuan uh, back uh, into Mizian, and he's it was one of those ones that I, I thought. In real time, I was like, oh, he's, he's overrun this here. The chance is gone. But he just kept persisting and kept persisting, and he eventually pokes it past Jack Butland. Um, so do you think it kind of the goal, as it happened, kind of encapsulated what Hibs were maybe trying to do in the first half? Yeah, I think so. I mean, like, it's actually funny. When I watch the goal back a few times, you can see, like, Diamandi's, like, free in the middle, and he's, like, demanding on the ball. And as the ball goes into him, he sort of takes a touch, and he tries to... To slot it through, I think to Cantwell, and it's actually Triantis that intercepts it. Um, so obviously it shows that that was pretend. You know, we have to maybe sacrifice leaving Diamondi there, but Triantis intercepts the ball goes like you say into Marcondes. It's a great little disguise ball through, and and after that you can. That's exactly what their Hibs are trying to do: get into Yuan to 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 run it. I mean, I think it was actually a uh, Suter and then and Lundstrom recovering because yeah, running at Goldson Suter like you know they, we've got pace to. Yeah. To hurt them there. Um and, and obviously after that, I think Mizian had one in the box just before where he sort of like got in, but his touch kind of let him down a little bit. So it was uh, it was a great show of strength and balance and, and composure. Um and the only other person I thought deserved a little mention was Lafondra, because I think he as it is it's as it starts to the attack starts to, to manifest itself, he sort of takes his run out to the left hand side and it just keeps Goldson just at bay as the attack's building and Tavernier mm -hmm. doesn't quite track back on Mizian and it means when he goes into the box, Goldson's kind of stretching and sort of dives in for it as well. So I thought Lafondra's running as well um, was really important in that just to keep the space open for Mizian. I think lesser strikers would have maybe sucked up that space in the, in the middle mm -hmm. of the box. So yeah, I thought he was worth a mention as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's the kind of subtleties that I like about Adam Lafondra's game. Um, it's a lot of it is kind of so simple, but you know, so effective. Um, kind of does it. He does, as you say, that he kind of does it makes a lot of contributions that people don't notice. Mm -hmm. you know, clever movements, clever touches. You know, he likes to play one-two touch. Um, so yeah, absolutely agree with you there. Um, so if we were talking about reprieves before, um. I mean, I just think there can't really be... I know there was a lot of first-half stoppage time, but I don't think there can be really any excuse for equalising in first-half stoppage time and then still going in at half-time behind. It was a... It was a pivotal moment in the game, really, I felt, and it was. It must have been, you know, such a kind of sucker punch for Hibs to, to concede that goal again, just as did with the the first one how do you you know kind of view how that panned out what do you think went wrong there yeah like watched it back a few times and you know we're actually in an okay shape you know we're set up okay then i think it's the as the ball goes out um to taverni you sort of see obita pushing out to press which i'm guessing would be you know an instruction and he's maybe thinking that behind him things are sorted but there's a lot of and I noticed that a few times, having watched the game back yesterday, a lot of times the players passing players on, which 
is obviously fine, um, but obviously against a team like Rangers, you have to make sure that that happens and people are, are knowing what they're doing. And, and I think what happened, the ball goes out to Tavernier and Cantwell kind of comes off the back of um, mm -hmm. sort of, he comes off the back, I think of it's uh, Mizian and, uh, and, and Emiliano. And I think they're kind of pointing towards Rocky, uh, who's kind of been occupied a wee bit by Scott Wright and, and sort of as the ball goes down, as Rocky's then going out, he's just too late. It's too late to get out there um, yeah. to try and to try and block the cross. And the only other bit as well I noticed is that um, actually I think as the ball goes out to to Cantwell or just as he's about to slide, uh, sorry, as the ball goes out to Fernie, just as he slides it through for Cantwell, Triantis passes Dessers to Fish. You can see I'm sort of point. Yeah. But Dessers has already got about maybe a yard or two on Fish, and Fish is just the wrong side of him, really. So as the play develops. He's just got no chance in getting back in. And um, I think Triantis is maybe thinking, right, Rocky's going out. I'm going to then cover the, the front part of the post. Um, but yeah, it just shows you against a team like Rangers or when you come up against better opposition, those little moments uh, are yeah. the bits that, that sucker punch you. But it was a, it was a poor goal to lose. Um, and as you said, it, it really, you know, I think going in at 1-1 and then especially actually how we came out the second half as well for the first sort of 15 minutes or so. I think if that's sitting at 1-1, crowd start to get a, maybe a wee bit frustrated and, and we could have maybe done something from there but yeah that that really uh, was a bit of a hammer blow that goal yeah uh -huh. and I, I think you maybe you don't have to maybe give a slight bit of credit and you know obviously it's a terrible terrible goal to lose terrible time to lose it um but I mean a bit of credit perhaps I think Hibs did they, they didn't look <laughs> kind of demoralized by it at the, the start of the second half I, I felt you know it'd be kind of you know, I'd be exaggerating a wee bit if I said I think that Hibs came out and dominated the, the start of the second half. But I felt there was there was potential there for to you know to make things happen in the second half. What did you what did you make of how that panned out? Yeah, I think it was. I, I agree with you. I don't. Th we didn't dominate it by any stretch of the imagination. It was becoming a bit more like a basketball game. You know, there was yeah. a bit of we go, they go. Um, so. We definitely, you know, we had a couple of really, really good moments. I think there was, um, although I don't think it actually was considered a shot when I look back at the stats, but we end up playing out pretty well and Cadden whips it into the back post and Lafondra gets it and he sort of cuts inside, but it's, it's yeah. like a, kind of like a bit of a meek effort um, at goal. Well, obviously, I think we had, uh, there was another moment where Newell, again, done really well getting out and he hits a really nice pass in behind for Lafondra and Suter sort of stretches and just keeps it out and, Mizian had a shot uh, cut inside, had a shot wide, and I think Yuan had a moment where he sort of blasted past, um, I think it was maybe Goldson, and probably should fire it across the box, but tried mm -hmm. to pull it back. So we certainly had our moments, but obviously on the flip side of that, Rangers had their moments as well, and we're, we're kind of turning the screw a little bit, but I certainly think we were causing them enough problems to to stay in the game at that at that point. Yeah, uh -huh. certainly we're kind of... Not didn't fall out of it until I think a bit later on uh, in the second half. I did feel there was kind of something there for Hibs, um, certainly in that first period of the of the second period. Um, but I do kind of feel as the the game wore on, I do feel like Hibs kind of fell out of things a wee bit. Nick Montgomery made a few changes. Um, he brings on uh, brings on Jair and. Nathan Mariah Welsh, uh, and it almost escaped me there for a second. Um, and I, from there, I, I'm not, I feel like Rangers, as the game wore on, you know, they're much, you know, kind of got more depth on the bench than Hibs yeah. do. Um, <clears throat> that kind of goes without saying, you know, it's, it's a question of resource, resources um, and the kind of amount of players that they can, you know, quality players that they can fill their bench with. Do you, do you feel that the game kind of drifted a wee bit from a Hibs perspective as it wore on? Yeah, I think the subs, which I'm sure we'll probably get into, I think the subs definitely took the sting out of the game. I think Rangers as well, um, obviously they're bringing off quality off the bench. And I actually think later on, one of the when after we brought Boyle on, they moved Sterling back to left back. And I think that also then sunk us a little bit with like our sort of our out ball was him because I think Mizian, yeah. you could clearly see, was tired. And um, But I think for our subs, yeah, I was trying to work out, you know, I think Triantis, I mean, obviously he had a yellow card. He was dropping deep into the back, the back line, which I would I'm guessing was a tactic. I don't think that he was just choosing to do that. Perhaps yeah, at two one, 
Montgomery's thinking, right, we, we need to we need to apply a bit more pressure. Um so I think taking him off and putting Mariah Welsh on made a lot made sense. You know, I think he he was obviously a bit more he stayed up beside Newell, which let Emiliano maybe stay a little bit further forward. So so I really understood that sub um and probably thought that was a fair one to do at that point. I don't think I would have coupled that at the same time with taking off Lafondra. Um, was a wee bit surprised at that, to be honest. Yeah, like, I wasn't. Yeah. I couldn't. I mean, you were at the game, so I, but I, I couldn't see. Like, I mean, he's maybe he's maybe fatigued, and he's maybe thinking, you know, these next two games now are becoming super crucial for us, and we need yeah. him with maybe Venti out. So he's probably thought, I'm going to have to sacrifice him here. I don't know if that's maybe in his decision making, but as soon as you know Jair came on, he was really ineffective in that position, and I think moving Mizian to to striker. He becomes less effective as well, um, so it just kind of took the attacking threat out of us a little bit, and then, yeah, that's where I started to see the the game sort of slip a little bit. I think when Boyle came on, that offered mm -hmm. us, you know, like I say, a little bit of a, a better opportunity. But yeah, I think the the two subs at that time just yeah, it killed the it killed the game. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, kind of. No shortage of endeavour um, from Jair on Saturday. You know, he is a, a kind of guy who gives you everything, but I thought he kind of struggled um, when he came on, unfortunately. Um, and then from there, you know, Rangers get the clinching goal five minutes from time. Rabi Matondo just pinging one in from distance. And that's, you know, that's that at that point, really. Um, no coming back from that. Um so maybe just from a kind of more general perspective, was there anybody who stood out to you from a, a Hibs perspective as you know having a particularly good game? You know, I was I thought um, like you said at the, the top of the show, <clears throat> I think Newell and I think Cadden Cadden performed pretty well. Yeah. Um, also, obviously, I think from an attacking threat and point of view, I think Yuan and, and Mizian did really well um, mm -hmm. as well. Just sort of obviously tied in towards that. It's a, it's a lot of demands, like yeah, you know, when you're playing against Rangers, it's, it's it's a difficult one. And you know, I'd like to think, you know, if we had Venny to come off the bench and Boyle fully fit and things like that, that we we could have had a had a real go there. Um, I think Marshall made a, a couple of decent saves as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they were probably the ones that that stood out the most most for me in that game. Yeah, I, as I said, I thought Junior had a particularly good game. Um, I thought he played really quite well in that middle of the park with anything that kind of, whenever, as I said, I think I said earlier, whenever Hibbs did get out, I thought that he was kind of key to it. He was really composed on the ball, yeah. kind of, uh, could be protected it really well at times under the kind of Rangers press um, and used it quite smartly as well. Um, you know, but unfortunately, wasn't to be for Hibbs at Ibrox. It's now. It's a kind of long run without a win against Rangers, and the result coupled with um, results elsewhere, unfortunately, as you all know by now, leaves Hibs uh, back down in seventh place, um, and it's Dundee who are currently occupying that uh, top six place. Uh, they've got three games left. Hibs have two. That game in hand for Dundee is against Rangers, um, and if they basically if they win their games, they will finish in the top six at Hibs' expense. Uh, so I don't know, like maybe moving away from the game just for a wee bit, mate. Um, I think you know it's the, the kind of aim for the rest of the season. The purpose has been to try and get in that top six uh, to you know just create maybe a, a bit of excitement, um, you know, for the final games. You know, because it's a kind of case of if. You know, Hibs, they slip into the bottom half. They're not really in any, you know, serious peril of being dragged into that relegation fight. Um, so it would kind of create a kind of, obviously, a series of ultimately kind of probably meaningless games. Um, how you, how optimistic <laughs> are you that over the next couple of games that Hibs will drag themselves back into the top six? Yeah, I mean, you'd you'd like to think the Dundee game against Rangers that Rangers would maybe take care of that, and and obviously you know the fixtures for for both Hibs and Dundee are, are are winnable games, you know, and I think from a Hibs point of view, they have to get six points, you know, and and uh, and hope that obviously Dundee drop points elsewhere. We are we we have improved a little bit in the last wee while. We've obviously started to pick up results. I actually think. Could I see us winning these two games, but Dundee winning and us falling out? I, I could see that happening to, to potentially, and, and I think it'll yeah. just be from some of those two-two draws we had throughout the season that you knew were going to come back 
and 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 sting and you know sting us. And I think that's ultimately yeah. where I would potentially see it happening. Yeah, I think that um, I think in particular that one up at Ross County is going to prove yeah. to be um, it could potentially you know be very very consequential um, if Hibs don't finish in the top six. Uh, just finally, mate, you know we uh, you, you touched on it kind of briefly there. Obviously, there's has been a lot of change since January. Um, a lot of players coming in, slight kind of change of you know you did that excellent excellent piece. Um, a wee while back uh, about how you know things had been tweaked since then um you know kind of tactical and personnel changes you know so how, what have you made of how things have panned out since january i do feel there has been there has been kind of improvement in the sides um you know obviously as does happen when you bring in better players but you know, how much improvement has there been you know what is your kind of take on where hibs have gone since the turn of the year yeah, it's it's a little bit sort of 50-50. I think he's done well to, you know, the personnel we've brought in has obviously been a really good quality. Um, but I think we have to give Montgomery some credit that he's managed to get a system, you know, he's tweaked the system and he's actually managed, especially getting the fitness into guys like, you know, Mizian yeah. and Emiliano as well. I think he's managed them fairly well and, and they're obviously, you know, contributing, uh, contributing well in the game so far. So I definitely think there has been improvement. I think it's just, yeah, that some when you look back at the results, you know, I was saying to a few friends before that you know, it's been a really underwhelming season. There's not like when you try and think of yeah. high points and high moments. I mean, even under even when we were under Lee Johnson, when there was a lot of crazy moments, there were still big moments and, and high scoring games and things like that. And, and I don't think we've really had that this season with Montgomery. And I think that potentially might sit against them come the end of the season, you know, I, I kind of would fear for him. I think if we didn't get in the top six, I would I would wonder what the, the, the higher powers are maybe thinking ahead of next season and mm -hmm. potentially a lot of change. And I, and I think that's the other point as well, is that quite clearly some of the players know that they'll potentially not be there next season. And um, even yeah. when you look at the lineup, there's a high potential that the squad, you know, six, seven, eight players could be, you know, overturned from that first first eleven. Um, so we're just a wee bit in limbo at the moment. So there has been improvements, and it's been great to see some of the <clears throat> the caliber of players that have come in. Um, but I, I, if we can squeeze into the top six and have you know those better games and bigger games and things like that, then I think that'll mm -hmm. maybe put the feel good factor back in ahead of next season. Yeah, I think because there's nothing that quite diminishes enthusiasm among fans like. You know, games that just are kind of at the end of the day are pretty inconsequential. Um, so yeah, I think the real danger of Hibs don't get into that top six is that the season just drifts. And I think you've you've nailed it there. Really, I think the the word for the campaign as a whole has just been kind of underwhelming. Um, you know, there's been kind of not too many massive uh, high points to really t to look back on. Um, quite a few lows, unfortunately, uh, especially kind of around that winter. Christmas period. Um, I think we actually promised on here not to mention that run of games again. Uh, so I do apologise for bringing that <laughs> back up. Um, yeah, as for today, though, I think we are going to leave it there. Um, just want to thank Craig uh, again for joining us. Uh, we really do appreciate it. And as I said at the start of the show, if you don't follow Craig on Twitter, um, you can get him at 9125 Analysis. It's kind of it's essential stuff to be honest, for Hibs fans. It really is. Uh, some of the insight is... Well, it's not some of the insight. Sorry, I'm doing you a disservice there. All of the well, insight that's fair, is... No, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> all of the insight is excellent. Um, you know, clear, concise, easy to follow breakdowns of games. And Craig, as I said, has also been a contributor on our website. He's done some really, really good stuff. Um, so, yeah, definitely check out his stuff on Twitter. I may have, at some point, have borrowed one or two of his ideas for pieces on the website. I can possibly confirm. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, okay, thanks very much um, for joining us today. If you like what we do and you've not subscribed to us yet, can I just direct you to the ticker at the bottom of your screen there that I forgot to switch on until halfway through the show. Um, but... <laughs> It's uh, got a link to uh, our website with details of how you can subscribe. Um, our current offer is £4 for four months. And for that, you get more videos like this, uh, pre-match content, post-match content, during game content, uh, tactical analysis uh, from the likes of myself, our editor, Patrick McPartland, and from Craig as well. 
uh, features, interviews, just everything, everything you could possibly imagine uh, when it comes to him. So if you do like what we do, please do consider uh, checking that link out because we really, really do appreciate it. Um, but I'm going to shut up there and let Craig get on with his day. Um, as I said, thanks again for joining us, mate, and thank you to everyone who's tuned in. We do appreciate it, and we will catch you again next time. Cheers. Thank you.